Sonata number five by the great Belgian violinist Ishang Izai is a piece that rings the violin so intensely for the player that it feels like afterwards your brain is vibrating with the open strings and overtones of the instrument. The vibrations go from the violin into the chin rest and then into your jawbone and then into your inner ear and around your head. The space around your head is vibrating with these resonances and it is so hypnotic. It resets, feels like it resets your body on a cellular level. Um, he does this with a lot of open strings. It's in G major. So the beginning gives you a, a little hint of this. One other thing he does to keep this going is when one melody is moving, sometimes he'll keep another note steady like an open string, open string as opposed to a fingered note. So open string will, will keep going at the same time. Ooh, out of tune. You have to be in tune when you start this piece. Oh my goodness. I was thinking how this is one thing, and then he lifts it up an octave and keeps the keeps the, the open string with the pitzes. Isn't that fascinating? And throughout the whole piece, it just builds and builds. it's open strings, it's drone notes, it's melodies that the, the way he does the double stops in this particular piece, the right intonation fits into the resonance. So like at the beginning, how I play on its own, I do a slightly different tuning when it's with the open string because it sounds out of tune if I do it that way. super subtle, but I'm finding my place in the overtones and the resonance so that it all adds up. So then it's a, just a two, a two movement sonata. Um, the second movement starts with this dance that also leans right into these same notes. There's this melody, but then the underpinning is so strong. And then the end. It's just keeping the G ringing, 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 ringing. <laughs> it's an amazing feeling. And um, I also think that since this was written for the second violinist of his string quartet named Matthew Crickboom, the second violin is an inner voice. It plays a lot of the lower notes between the two violin parts and a lot of emphasis is placed in a lot of second violin parts in scores on connecting the top melody with the lower part of the inner voices. So this depth, this is speculation on my part, but the depth of resonance, spinning that resonance up from the bottom of the instrument, it's something that Izai would have been very familiar with in Crick Boom's playing. So I find it fascinating to think how the way a composer knows the playing of the dedicatee can impact how they think of the dedicatee as a player and what they want them to play more of. <laughs>